Hi, Robin Vermont here. In this session we're going to create a multiple regression model um, using SEM. That is, we're going to use a particular software package called Onyx to produce an SEM based model, which is a multiple regression. You can get more details from my website, which is shown there. Before we actually create the model in uh, Onyx, we are going to carry out a standard regression analysis very quickly in R. Um, you don't need to know this, it's just to get the standard results, which you could do it in SPSS or Stata or anything. Back in R, I've created one line of code which says get my data, um, which I've stored here in this directory, and I've called it airpol, short for air pollution, dot R data. And now we have the data file in. If I take iPol now, we will see the data. I'll just talk a bit about the data set. You can find out more details from that website there. But the data set I've downloaded consists of seven variables. We'll actually only be using a subset of these four variables. We'll be considering the mortality rate, age adjusted mortality, and how this is affected by three things educational level, population density, and the percentage of non whites in the area. The standard thing to do is always to look at the correlations between these variables, so we'll do that quickly. And can we see here that education to the population density has a negative correlation, Pop education to percentage non white has a negative correlation, and education to most honey has a negative correlation. We can look at these other various intercepts as well. Because SEM uses covariances and produces covariances on the diagram rather than the correlations, and if you ask for standardized estimates, we're actually going to look at the print out the covariances as well, just to make sure we get the same values. There we are. We will now use the Psych library to produce a nice graphical display of some of those results we just talked about. We have a panel now showing the distribution of each of the variables, the correlation value, which you'll notice the size of the font is dependent on how large the correlation is. There's an inferred distribution from the histograms and the scatter plots for each one. The circles or ellipsoids are basically equivalent to confidence intervals for the two variables together. We will now produce our first regression model. To do that, I'll make sure I type in the right names. So I always use this little command called names, and it just produces the names of the variables. So what we're going to do is first of all create a model with every possible interaction for our three inputs. So we've got our output is mortality, input education, population density, and non-white percentage. And if we click summary to that, we get the fixed effects, the interactions, and one three-way interaction. You see the three-way interaction is not significant. Only one of the two-way interactions is possibly significant. And we notice that percentage on white is non-significant here. But if we take away these interactions, we'll find it becomes significant. So here is a simpler regression model with an intercept, fixed effect of education, population density, and non white percentage. And we see now that the population density has gained significance. We also get an R squared value and we get a P value associated with the R squared value. Now let's create this model in Onyx. Here in Onyx, I've already imported the data. This data set is called airpol.dat, which you can get from my website I showed at the beginning. Now we right click on the canvas, create new model, create empty model. Here's our empty model, and we're going to basically drag four variables we need. 
so as I say mortality is going to be our output a dependent variable and three inputs are going to be education population density and percentage of non-whites so we'll click on those three drag them across I'm just making sure it's the same as the handouts I'm putting in the same order remember all this is shown is the variances for each variable that is the squared standard deviations now we're going to draw regression lines between each of them so we click on the first one which is already selected right mouse click and drag along same click on the next one right mouse click drag along next one right mouse click drag along we want all these to be estimated we don't want them to be fixed values so we click on the first one then hold down the shift click click next one and next one and choose free parameter so now we have our free estimates we'd also like to see the standardized estimates so we click on one and then go customize path and it says show standardized estimates so let's find up for all three click on the first one next one and next one holding down the shift key customize path show standardized estimates there we are so we can see that we have a partial regression um, a b value there 25.5 0.01 and 4 and that is equivalent to a beta value of minus 0 0.37 0 0.02 and 0.61 Sorry, that's point two, isn't it? Yes, sir. Right, now we want to actually make this into a proper regression model, so we need to add a latent variable which is equivalent to the error term. So we'll just rename that error. And we drag again a regression line from error to there. We can either now, because error has no scale, we need to give it a scale either by setting its variance value or the path value to one. We can't estimate both of these. So I'll tend to choose which it happens in most software, it's setting the variance to one. So I say fix parameter, I say fix to one. There we are. And now we want to make this an estimated path. Okay, it'd be nice to see the standardized value as well. So we have created this regression model here, um, but you'll notice there's a little bit of a problem with it. We have this triangle up here, and if we click on the triangle, it says model is over specified. What that means is there's too many. Um, estimates it's trying to carry out with the data it has. Um, it doesn't use the raw data, remember at this stage it's using summary, it's using the covariances. Um, so what we've got here is a problem. We need to think about what is going wrong with this model. And what's going wrong is this mortality variable. We're trying to estimate the mortality variable from the three predictors, from the error, but also from its own variance, this error term here. So what in effect is, mortality has two error terms. And what happens is, if you actually had um, put this error term in after, and you'd put this in here, you'd found that these two values would have been different, and actually probably they are different to what I had started off with in the of a video before. Um, that is because it cannot estimate this uniquely because we have two errors going into the same variable so we need to get rid of one but we don't get rid of this error term because that's what we've, we'll be using to get the r square value from so we actually get rid of this one here so what we're saying now is that given these three predictors this produces a value which has an actually in effect a normal distribution when we say error we mean a normal distribution 
and technical term. Now you will notice that the standardized value here for this error term is 0.67 and if we go back to our R code here we have the output from the R code and you can see we have uh, multiple R squared of 0.59 and adjusted R squared of 0.57 so we're aiming for a 0.59 value on a diagram to show the R squared value but we don't have anything like that do we what we have actually here is a residual error and a standardized residual error 1 minus the square value of this standardized residual error should give us R squared so let's see if that does we'll use R to calculate that That gives us 0.55, which is not the same as the value we had in R, which was 0.59. It's less. So why is it less than the value that we claimed in the standard regression? Well, the answer is looking back at our model, and we don't have any modelling for the possible correlation between these variables. However, in a standard correlation analysis, these are allowed to be correlated and they need to be modelled as such. So to do that we just simply click on the first one, shift right mouse click and then we get a covariance arrow again, click on there, shift right mouse click, there's the next one, and that's one more, shift and, there, and we'll make this a little more respectable, better, and we want all these to be estimated values. And we would like to see the actual correlation values as well as the covariances. So we select all three, and then we choose customized path, show standardized estimate. You'll notice that it's a bit cluttered now. Uh, an easy way to help the diamond and slightly less cluttered is to move things. Just get rid of that. Click on the line, it disappears. And that's a little clearer now. And you'll notice it's a change now from 0.67 to 0.64. And let's see what 1 minus. 0.64 squared gives us. And that gives us 0 0.59. 0 0.59 compared to our output is identical 0.59. So now we have mimicked exactly standard regression analysis. Let's have a look at the estimates from the estimate window and see if there is anything else we're missing. So let's compare this now to the R output. Here we are. In R we have the intercept estimate and estimates for each of the three fixed effects that we chose. Here we seem to have a lot more. We have variance values for each of the input variables. We also have, here are the regression weights, minus 25, 0 0.007 and 3.99 which is the same as our 4 and we've worked out that we have an R squared value as well which is equivalent to this here 0.59 what we don't have is an intercept value of 114 which we have here so we miss an intercept value and yet the parameter estimates are the same same for each of our input variables. What can we do about that? Well, we'll just move this to the side. And what we do to mimic the intercept is we create a constant variable. Click on here, we get this triangle. We link the triangle to each of the observed variables the input and the output and then we allow them to become estimated click 
in all three, holding the shift key, then say free parameter, and we notice what we have is now the mean value for each of those variables modelled. Sometimes better. You can actually put uh, more than one constant variable in a diagram. So uh, we could take away that line, put those over there so they look a bit neater, and then we can create a, another constant here. And link it at make sure it's estimated and it's exactly the same as before the results. You'll notice none of these values change but if we go to now the summary statistics for Onyx we have a mean value estimated for each of our variables. So in this short video we've seen how to create a multiple regression um, diagram in SEM which mimics exactly the standard regression output in something like SPSSS or R. Next video we'll be looking at confirmatory factor analysis.